Welcome back to the Bills Bunker. I'm Jake Varco, and it is Table Smash Tuesday. Here we go. Let's get rowdy. We got a jam-packed show ahead today. Lots to discuss regarding the Buffalo Bills and the upcoming NFL Draft, which is now under two weeks away. The draft, under two weeks away. Big-time expectations for this Buffalo Bills team to be an active participant. And obviously with 10 picks, there's a lot that can be done with those picks. There's a lot of speculation about trading up, getting a receiver, trading down, or whatever might be the case. There's a lot of speculation about what the Buffalo Bills are going to do, specifically in the first round with the need at the wide receiver position. On top of that, there's been some recent news surrounding the Bills franchise over the last week or so since we last did this Table Smash Tuesday stream last week. So lots to talk about today. Let's get to it. Let the show begin. Go Bills. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Yes, it makes us want to shout. Two. Shout. One, two, three, four years in a row. AFC's That's a nice show for you. Look at it. Beautiful. Honestly, one of the best things I've seen all night. Those fireworks right there. Let's go. Here we go. It's a beautiful Tuesday, a beautiful night for Table Smash Tuesday right here on the Bills Bunker. As you see, the sun is shining in, peeking through, and uh, it's just a gorgeous day, a great day to talk Buffalo Bills with the draft approaching. As I just mentioned at the top of the show, NFL draft now under two weeks away, so there's lots to dissect, and there's been some recent news surrounding the Buffalo Bills and their team. We're going to start off by recapping the news before we enter the draft discussions. And I want you all to leave your thoughts in the comment section down below throughout the entirety of this show. So let's dive in. First off, I mean, I think this is something we have to talk about. I, I kind of want to move on from the Stefan Diggs stuff. I think all Bills Mafia is in the same boat. But Stefan Diggs, he remains active on X, of course. He liked the next post that said Bills low-key got the worst fan base Y'all bitter as F in the comment section. So that, not ideal. Not an ideal look from Diggs. And it's something that we all know he loves making these cryptic X posts during his time in Buffalo. And you see something like that. It's just kind of, it makes you scratch your head a little bit. It, it blows you back for a second because, like, this guy spent four years with the Bills. He was productive as their top target. The Bills gave him a load of money during a contract extension. Top target for Josh Allen, one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League. The Bills fan base. This Bills fan base has endured so much heartbreak. We want to go back to the 90s, four straight Super Bowl losses. You had a 17-year playoff drought. This fan base is one of the best, not only in football, but in the entire world of sports. So I think it's just ludicrous, a ludicrous statement by Diggs. Are we better? Honestly. I don't. I think there might be a little bit of a sour taste based off how the relationship between Diggs and the Bills ended. Sure, but are we better? Honestly, no. I think, for, speaking for myself, and you let me know if I speak for you as well when I say this. But I think we're just we're excited to get this, get by this. Like put this stuff in the back seat. It's gone. I'm done talking about it. Thanks for thanks for four years. Whatever. That's what I'm feeling. Okay, and I see a comment. I'm not going to show it, but I see it. I see it. Yes, let's go Buffalo. Some other stuff that we should cover on this show, other news surrounding the Bills, obviously. OJ Simpson, he died at the age of 76 years old on Wednesday. OJ Simpson, if you know anything, well, I mean, you don't even have to watch football to know who OJ Simpson is. There's some stuff, some legal troubles that he got into. 
after his career. Um, great football player on the field, 100%. One of the Bills' all-time greats. He's honored on the Wall of Fame. And there was a question raised to me, will he remain on the Wall of Fame at the new stadium? And I think that's actually a great discussion to have because, I mean, they haven't removed O.J. Simpson's name from the Wall of Fame and the current Highmark Stadium. But will they move it over to the new Highmark Stadium? I'm not so sure about that, especially when you take into consideration there wasn't even a post for the death of O.J. Simpson. There wasn't even a post after the fact by the Buffalo Bills social media team. So I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised to see his name taken down before they they move over to the new stadium. But yeah, obviously his 1973 season, one of the best seasons by any running back ever, if not the best single season. Uh, you have the highest average yards per game, 143.1 yards per game there he had 2003 rushing yards in 1973 so obviously an exceptional season there but uh the person the character is definitely in question other news surrounding the bills we'll uh be more cheerful about this okay jordan phillips he signed a one-year contract with the new york giants jordan phillips he spent two tenures with the buffalo bills from 2019 to 2020 and then 2022 to 2023, he's big body defensive tackle. This big man, Jordan Phillips, and he made some plays for the Buffalo Bills over the last few years. I think he had two and a half sacks with the Bills in 2023. So he's over He's over 30 years old. The Giants, they get him at a cheap price. And it's another person that Brian Dable is familiar with over from the Buffalo Bills over to the New York Giants. Like that. That team has a bunch of Giants. Uh, that Giants team has a bunch of former Buffalo Bills in that locker room. A lot of familiar faces. They added Devin Singletary into the mix. Tyrod Taylor was their quarterback for a while. Matt Barkley had a stint there. I'm not sure if he's still there right now. Um, Isaiah Hodgins is back. They've got a lot of former Buffalo Bills on that New York Giants team, and it makes a whole lot of sense when you consider who their head coach is and Brian Dable. So, Jordan Phillips signing a one-year deal with the Giants. It's definitely a boost to their defensive line. And it's another rotational piece for that Giants team who they don't have very high expectations. But that front office, when you consider Daniel Jones being a former first-round pick, and it just hasn't really worked out. They've had a bunch of losing seasons over the last decade. So things haven't really worked out for the Giants, and they need all the help they can get. They'll take it with Jordan Phillips. Another former Buffalo Bill on the move, Deontay Hardy, who he had one year with the Buffalo Bills last season, and he had 150 receiving yards. Nothing really to write home about. Uh, One-year contract with the Baltimore Ravens. He's going to be someone who's really a kick return, punt return specialist. He might get some looks in that offense as well. I'm sure he will. And that it's another speedy weapon. Like just imagine if they line him up in the backfield or for a gadget play with Lamar Jackson, like a lot of speed on that Baltimore Ravens offense, adding another speedy guy and Deontay Hardy in his rookie season, I believe is 2019 or 2018. One of those two years, he was an all pro and pro bowl caliber player, especially as a returner. So some, some good stuff for him. And obviously the bills with Deontay Hardy is like the bills, there, if you can't bring back Gabe Davis, you're not going to bring back Deontay Hardy. Hardy, he didn't do too much for the Bills, but he did have one significant memory, and that is this 96-yard punt return touchdown, Week 18 against the Miami Dolphins. And boy, oh boy, let me tell you, I was at this game. This was electrifying. It took, you'd think it killed the crowd, but it didn't because Bills Mafia took that Hard Rock Stadium over. That was one of the most exciting plays, if not the most exciting play I have ever witnessed at a live sporting event. Deontay Hardy, that show-stopping speed. And obviously the implications of that Week 18 game were for the division, for the division title, for home playoff game. The Bills win that right there, that punt return touchdown, tied that game at 14. Bills end up winning 21-14 after Dawson Knox touchdown. So Hardy, he didn't do too much in his time with the Buffalo Bills, but Deontay Hardy did definitely have that memorable play in week 18 against the Miami Dolphins. And if I'm the Bills, 
I'm not paying Deontay Hardy the amount of money that he was scheduled to make just for one punt return touchdown a year. It's not worth it, but I do think Hardy, he'll have the opportunity to return some kicks in Baltimore, and with the new kick return format, that's definitely going to help raise his stock as a player for Baltimore. So it's not a bad addition for them. Not done on the news before we move to the dra draft needs, though, as there's some more stuff. Yes, the New York Jets, the J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. They have some new uniforms, and I'm wearing my old Bills retro uniform. Thurman Thomas throwback right here. But the Jets, they got some new uniforms today. Or I guess this was announced earlier in the week. Let's take a look. Right here, the New York Jets, new uniforms, the New Jersey Jets, New York Jets, whatever you want to call them. So the white uniform there, that is one that you are probably familiar with. And that is because Aaron Rodgers and the Jets wore that in week one against the Buffalo Bills. Week one of the 2023 season, Rodgers only played four snaps in that game. So we've seen that jersey before. That uniform is nothing new. The black and the green uniforms, new additions for the Jets, I think... Obviously, it's a very similar look to what the Jets have had in past years. Like, there's not much that you can do with the green, black, white. They're going back to the roots and 80s throwback here. I think it's definitely an upgrade. However, it is eerily similar to what we've seen in the past. And that white throwback, that white one, it's something that we've all seen before with Aaron Rodgers and the Jets sporting that in week one last season. Daniel Rojas says, mid yeah, you know what, like, I will say the Jets, I I myself, I don't really like the color green on any uniforms. I'll say the Philadelphia Eagles, Kelly Green uniforms are nice. Uh, the the uh, Green Bay Packers have some nice green jerseys as well. But overall, the color green, like, I don't really like sports teams that are green. The, the oh, Buffalo, y'all know. Yeah, how about the Dallas Stars wearing those green? Yeah. I don't like that. The green from Dallas Stars, nasty. Minnesota Wild, they're nasty. In the NFL, you've got the Jets, Eagles. The Kelly Green's nice. Packers, like, I'm not a big fan of green teams overall. And those jerseys that I just showed right here, I'm not a big fan. The black one's the nicest, in my opinion, though. I will say that the helmets are, are definitely... Nice. And Steph says, those jerseys will last as long as Rodgers did last season. Yeah. There's like that. Uh, it's the meme of Aaron Rodgers carrying the flag onto the field. and Yeah, it, it was uh, a tough go for Aaron Rodgers last season for sure. But it's going to be interesting to see what he does with the Jets and these new jerseys next season. Because they have revamped their team a little bit. But it's still the Jets. Now, in other news, we've got some ex-posts to discuss, and it's not Stefan Diggs. Thankfully, it's not Stefan Diggs this time. Actually, this isn't X. This is Instagram story. So an Instagram story shared by Buffalo Bills pass rusher Vaughn Miller. Let's play a game of fact or fiction. Is this fact or fiction? Vaughn Miller on his Instagram story said, Brandon Bean arriving to the 2024 NFL draft to trade up for a wide receiver. And Bean, we trust. Bills Mafia, LFG. Y'all know what that means. I don't need to say it. So, Von Miller. If we know anything about Von Miller, we know that he's a veteran that's well-respected in the National Football League. We know that he's someone who, obviously, he wanted to come to Buffalo. He got a big payday. And he's someone that has discussed moving into the front office duties at the end of his career. So that all tells me that Von Miller knows something. Now, is he playing with their heartstrings a little bit because he knows every member of Bill's Mafia wants a wide receiver? Or is he just dropping a bomb, telling everybody that the Bills are going to trade up for a wide receiver in this draft? Could be a smokescreen. Could be a fact. I'm not really sure what to believe, but I do believe that a lot of Bill's Mafia wants Brandon Bean to make that phone call trade up and draft a wide receiver here in a loaded wide receiver class. So it's definitely a possibility. It's definitely a possibility. Why aren't you a fan of green? Oh, I see you got the Eagles thing there. Uh, honestly, like 
I like blue more. You know, the blue. I got blue eyes. Blue's better than green, I think. Go Bills. Um, so, obviously, that Von Miller stuff is pretty interesting. But we have some more stuff. We're, we're right in the middle of the summer. Oh, not even the summer. Right in the middle of the spring. So, there's still a long period of time to go before we get into the NFL season. But there's still some news surrounding the teams and some good stuff. Good stuff that I love to see. The Bills began their voluntary offseason workouts. And I got a clip to show you because the boys are back in town. Josh Allen giving the thumbs up. That's something you love to see. I always love seeing the shot of Josh Allen giving the thumbs up. Every time this guy's on camera, he's giving the thumbs up just like this. Go Bills. It's it's awesome. And let me show that again. I mean, just look at this guy. He's ready to go to work. He's ready for another big season with the Buffalo Bills. And I think this guy's going to have a massive season in 2024. Obviously, with all the Diggs drama, there is a lot of extra pressure on Josh Allen now. There's, you know, all these tweets and exposts about, is Josh Allen going to be okay with Stephon Diggs? Well, he's got a lot to prove now. And he's coming into work. Check out this photo of him in the workout facility earlier this week. Josh Allen, that's what I call a big dog lift. Josh Allen's a big human for you. For those of you who don't know, Josh Allen, six foot five, two hundred thirty-five pounds. Now it looks like he's doing some lunges here. Lunges, 40, 40 pound dumbbells on each side. Add that to his weight. Woo! That's some impressive stuff. This guy's sweating. He's he's putting in the work, and I love to see that. Big dog lifts. Big dog back at work. Let's go. Josh Allen is in the gym. Buffalo Bills. They've begun their off-season workout, uh, voluntary, voluntary off-season workouts. So, love it. And, yes, Sky, Sky Fan 2020 says, in Josh we trust, it's like he never left. Yeah, it, it is such a quick turnaround. The, the It seems like just a few weeks ago the Bills season ended, and now we're right here, off-season workouts, voluntary workouts. And before you know it, the draft is going to be complete. We're going to be entering training camp and then preseason, and we're going to do, we're going to do it all over again. It's going to be fun. There's going to be a lot to talk about over the next few weeks, few months before the season starts. The draft under two weeks away, and we've got some more stuff to talk about. One more visit. We've got a visit to talk about before we really get into the draft needs segment of the show. An interesting little tidbit of information that was received today from Jordan Schultz of ESPN is the fact that Iowa defensive back Cooper DeGene was visiting with the Buffalo Bills today. Cooper DeGene, for those of you who don't know, I've got his information right here, handy and ready to go for you. Cooper DeGene, six foot, 203 pound defensive back who's 21 years old, seven interceptions over the past two seasons. With the Hawkeyes at Iowa, he's got solid tackling. He's considered to be one of the best tacklers in the NFL draft, which very impressive from a defensive back. And his versatility is perhaps one of his strongest ass assets. Cooper DeGene, this guy has some electrifying playmaking ability as a defensive back, and he's versatile. You can line him up as a corner, you can line him up in the slot, or you can line him up at the safety position, I think that's something that the Bills definitely value. But, like I mentioned, Cooper Jean projected top 20, 25 pick in the upcoming NFL draft. So, maybe, I mean, the Bills, let's be real. The Bills, every team has, they got to have their visits. Like, they have a lot of visits to use. So, maybe just looking at a visit isn't telling the full story. But there is potential that the Bills don't take a wide receiver in the first round. I'm not saying that it's likely, but there's definitely that potential. And Cooper DeGene, if you were to go away from wide receiver in the first round, that might be one of your best options because this kid, he can ball. These guys getting paid big time. Of course, their ass should be in the gym. Yeah, they got to get the pumps. They got to get, they should be working out harder than anyone else on this planet because that's their full-time job. 
It is. Eagles are my NFC team. Bills are my AFC team. So who would you rather see a win? Who would you rather win a suit? Who would you rather see win a Super Bowl? You already saw the Eagles do it in 2017. So better be the Bills. Come on. All right. All right. Now let's get into the draft needs segment of the show. And obviously, we know where I'm going with the first draft need. It's at the wide receiver position. And I got some high-tech stuff for you today. Look at that. Right down there, I got a whole current wide receiver depth chart. I'm ready. I'm prepared for you. Okay? So, when you look at the Bills depth chart right now, their wide receiver core, it's lacking a little bit with no Stephon Diggs, no Gabe Davis. Heck, no Deontay Hardy. You have Curtis Samuel, Khalil Shakir, Mac Hollins, KJ Hamler, Andy Isabella, Tyrell Shavers, and then you got Thompson. Like there's some people that a lot of a lot of these guys you haven't even heard of. Okay, let's be, let's speak facts. So the Buffalo Bills obviously have a need at the wide receiver position. You want to extend Josh Allen's Super Bowl window and give him the best possible opportunity to win a Lombardi Trophy while he's in his prime years with your team. You got to give him a top target. You just have to. And sure, James Cook, Dalton Kincaid, these guys are young, emerging talents who you can expect to see more from them next season. You can expect to see a heavier workload in the run game with James Cook. I think that's something that the Bills were kind of transitioning to at the end of last season and the second half of last season. And it all really started in that game against the Jets and then against the Cowboys, where the Bills just ran the football consistently. They ran it down their opponent's throat, and they – kind of shied away from the deep ball to digs. They were going James Cook, Dalton Kincaid, a slower methodical offense, utilizing Josh Allen's leg as well. But still, you need a wide receiver. And when you look at the wide receiver class in 2024, this draft pass is loaded with them. Here is the top-ranked wide receivers in the 2024 NFL draft. According to CBS Sports, Number one, obviously, you have Marvin Harrison Jr., two, Malik Neighbors, three, Roma Dunze. Those three, those are the clear-cut top three options, and it's highly, highly unlikely that the Bills get their hands on any one of these three players. They're all going to be off the board probably by the time pick number 10 to 12 rolls around. The guy that the Bills could potentially trade up to get is Brian Thomas Jr. He's ranked as the 17th prospect in the draft, and he's someone that you can expect to see him go in that 14, anywhere to 22 range. Honestly, like there's potential that the Bills make a move up to get him, especially if he starts sliding down a little bit. And then after that, so you have Tier 1 with a Dunze Neighbors Harrison, Tier 2, Brian Thomas Jr. And then tier three, it's Adonai Mitchell, Lad McConkie, Xavier Worthy. That's your t- Tier 3, guys. Tier 4. Javon Baker, Troy Franklin, Keon Coleman, and a guy that isn't on this list that a lot of Bills fans really like is Xavier Leggett, who we will now call XL. And if the Bills draft Xavier Leggett, that is what we will refer refer to him as, XL, because he's a big man, big man at the wide receiver position, extra large Xavier Leggett. I love it, but maybe we'll see. Nickel City Mafia, let's go. Says, man, I love Cooper. I just don't see Bean taking a DB with the first pick. And, yeah, I I probably – I'm not expecting that at all. I think the Bills just have to – they have these visits that they have to use up. But Cooper DeGene is an electrifying playmaker uh, with that versatility as well, able to play in the slot, uh, your main corner, or at the safety position. So there's a lot to like about Cooper DeGene, but the Bills – we know that they have a wide receiver need like that is clearly that is the clear cut number one need for this team. And honestly, if the bills don't draft a wide receiver in the first round, it's going to be some, uh, some angry bills, mafia members. Like it's going to be, you thought the digs drama was bad on X. Just wait till hopefully don't wait till that happens. But if that were to happen, you know, there would be some outrage. Yeah, I'm a, yeah, so, yeah. 
Yeah, they they would definitely like riot or something. Honestly, they wouldn't be too happy. They would be th- the opposite of thrilled. Okay, so draft need number one is obviously at the wide receiver position. I the guy I want is Brian Thomas Jr. He's someone who, you know, those top three guys are Harrison Jr., Adunze, and Neighbors. Usually, in almost any other draft class, Brian Thomas Jr. would be in that top tier wide receiver discussion, but he's just not on those guys' level right now. And there's just too many wide receiver talents in this draft class. So with that being said, the amount of wide receivers that are in this draft class, the Bills can stay put at 28 and still get a guy, but that it's up to them to decide. Do they do they see that much of a difference with a Brian Thomas Jr. than they do with a guy like Adonai Mitchell or Xavier Worthy? Because that's really what's going to be the deciding factor on if the Bills decide to trade up to get a wide receiver or if they stay put and draft another wide receiver. Like, is Brian Thomas Jr. that much better than Aladdin McConkie or Xavier Worthy? It remains to be seen, and we're going to see how the Bills value these wide receiver prospects in less than two weeks. Draft need number two I have for this team is on the defensive line. The defensive line, yeah, the Bills, they had some losses there too. I mean, obviously the most notable one would be Leonard Floyd, who's now a member of the San Francisco 49ers. If you look at the Bills' defensive line, especially considering how many free agents they had this offseason, they did a pretty good job at retaining a lot of their own assets, their homegrown players, like Daquan Jones and Oliver still here. They brought in a few depth pieces like Austin Johnson and Deshaun Williams. They still have Greg Rousseau, A.J. Appanessa, but all these guys, there's still a lack of production because – Leonard Floyd last season had 10 and a half sacks. You need to find a way to replace that. And I don't think A.J. Epines is the answer. We don't know what Von Miller's production will be like last season. He didn't have a single sack last year. So with all that being said, the Bills defensive line, they need some help. Preferably on the edge rusher. I'd, I'd put edge rusher as a higher need than defensive tackle. And I know Daquan Jones, he's aging. He's had an injury history over the last few years. Ed Oliver is still your mainstay at the defensive tackle position, but you just need, you need some more pieces, especially when you consider that the Buffalo Bills utilize these defensive line rotations in a really like they do it a lot. Sean McDermott loves those rotational pieces. So you need to draft at the defensive line. So right now I'm looking, get your wide receiver in the first, second round. After that, address defensive line because there's a there's a strong need there. You need to win in the trenches. You need to be able to stop the run. You need to be able to get to the quarterback, especially when you play quarterbacks like Patrick Mahomes. Seems like every year in the playoffs. So you need to be able to get to the quarterback. You need to be able to stuff the run. And you need to be able to eat, eat up these blocks to allow the second-level linebackers to run more freely, make tackles make some stops. That's my draft need number two. I'm curious to know what yours is. Nickel City Mafia. I really like BTJ and XL, Brian Thomas Jr. and Xavier Leggett. I know I'm on the opposite end, but I'd be okay with taking defensive tackle in the first pick and wide receiver in the second. Heck, I'd also be good with trading back in the first round to get a third round pick and you know what? This is a this is a great comment because there has been so much discussion about the Bills are going to trade up. The Bills are going to trade up. It might not happen. It really it might not happen. We know that we know that Brandon Bean has a history of trading up in the draft. He traded up to get Josh Allen. He's traded up to get Dalton Kincaid and others. But there is potential just based off of how many wide receivers that we have in this draft class, especially those projected first to second round guys. Like we know. Those top guys are going to be off the board in the top 10. But after that, there's a bunch of players, a bunch of players at the wide receiver position that are going to go late first, early to mid second. And you're going to be able to really take your pick of what guy you want at pick number 28. But with that being said, you have some other needs on this team. So you could trade back, get some more picks, even build up next year's pick repertoire. And 
you can you can make your picks here. So it's interesting. And like you said, get a third round pick. The Bills don't have their third round pick this year because they traded uh, that third round pick to Green Bay Packers at the trade deadline to get Rasul Douglas and a fourth round pick. So I think the Bills have three fourth round picks right now. They have two or three fourth round picks right now for this upcoming season. So this upcoming draft. So there's definitely a lot, a lot of speculation about what the Bills are going to do with that 28th overall pick. They could trade up. They could trade down. They could stay put. Whatever they do, honestly, just got to trust in Brandon Bean to do the right thing here. Let's see. Sky fan. Oh, I got to poke my head up. Okay. If we beat Kansas City in the championship game in the 2020 season, could we have beaten the Bucs in Super Bowl 55 or would Brady still beat Buffalo? Law. In my opinion, Buffalo would have played better than KC did. Well, the thing about Kansas City in that uh, 2020 Super Bowl game was that their offensive line was depleted. Like, their offensive line was pretty much non-existent. Like, I don't know the number of starters they had missing, but they had some significant blows to that offensive line. And Patrick Mahomes was under constant pressure all game. If I were to guess, honestly, I'm, I'm not going to be a Bills homer here. If the Bills made it to the Super Bowl that year, they probably would have lost to Tom Brady. That guy was on another level. He was on a mission that season. It was like a, it was an FU season of the New England Patriots. And you know how Brady has, Brady's done the Bills pretty dirty in his career. But hey, you know what? It was his record 34 and 3, 35 and 3 against the Bills? Like it's something crazy. It's one of those craziest statistics ever. Uh, not a fan of the guy, but definitely. Got to got to give him some props. He's he's the goat. And did you see what he said about Josh Allen recently? I had a short about this the other day. Tom Brady was asked on some podcast. He was asked, "Who do you think will be the next quarterback to win their first Super Bowl?" His answer was Josh Allen. For that, I almost almost forgave him for all those losses that he handed the Bills. But still, hey, he's the goat. But He's not my favorite player, that's for sure. Yes, thank you. Nickel City and Mafia agrees. Brady would have beaten us again. And if you haven't yet, go check out their channel. Lots of great content over there. They do a lot of live streams, and they talk about the Sabres too. So if you're a hockey fan, go light up the lamp. All right, draft need number three that I have for the Buffalo Bills. And this is one that not everyone's going to agree on, and that's fine. I don't need you to agree. Draft need number three for me is defensive back. And you look at the cornerback room, there's a lot of returning faces. The Bills, honestly, if you take into consideration the pieces that they lost, Jordan Poyer, Micah Hyde, Tredavious White, okay, that's not that big of a deal. When you like, Sure, the names are big household names. Trey White, former All-Pro, Pro Bowl defensive back from the cornerback position. But with that being said, he's had two season ending injuries in the last three years, the safety position, Jordan Poyer, Micah Hyde. These guys are aging. Looks like Micah Hyde's probably going to retire. Jordan Poyer joins the Miami dolphins doing his thing, whatever the cornerback room. It's actually pretty solid. Rasul Douglas with Christian Benford, Kyrie Elam. Uh, Elam is someone who we don't really know what to expect from him. He's a former first round pick 20, Second overall in 2022, uh, Taron Johnson, now the highest paid nickel corner in the league. Like that's really solid. But the thing that I keep mentioning, and I don't hear other people mentioning, is the fact that Rasul Douglas, he hasn't received a contract extension beyond next season yet. Rasul Douglas, I have tons of belief in him, and I'm sure the Buffalo Bills do as well. They gave up a third round pick to get him from the Green Bay Packers last year at the trade deadline. The thing that really bothers me is the safety room right now. You have Mike Edwards from the Chiefs, who he's won two Super Bowls in Kansas City, uh, one in Kansas City, one in Tampa Bay back in 2020. You have DeMar Hamlin, Taylor Rapp, and Cam Lewis. Like, there's a lot of inexperience at that position. Mike Edwards is your most experienced guy, Taylor Rapp. He also won a Super Bowl at the Rams in 2021. So there's a lot of that championship pedigree there, but they haven't really – you know, 
they haven't really proven themselves in this defensive scheme with the Buffalo Bills too much yet. R- Taylor Rapp had a solid little uh, display last season. Like we saw a little bit of him in glimpses, but we didn't we didn't really see him take over the starting position or anything. I want to see another defensive back out of here, and I'm not saying in the first round. Sure, I mentioned Cooper DeGene earlier. That's just because he was on a visit with the Bills today. I'd like to see the Bills get a defensive back or two, whether it's a corner or safety or someone who can do both. I'd like to see them address this need somewhere around the fourth. This is a day three kind of thing. Like this isn't something that needs to be a dire need. This isn't a dire need for the team, but it is something that I'd like to see them address in day three, add defensive back depth. And we know, we all know that the bills like, On that defensive side of the football, they have some late round steals. Matt Milano, uh, Dane Jackson, Christian Bemford, Taron Johnson. Day three picks for the Bills on defense turn out well. And I want another one in the defensive secondary. Let's go. I love to see it. I love to see it. We're uh, we're in alignment. We're seeing we're seeing things the same way here. We're seeing things the same way. Red, white, and Bills in the chat. Let's go. Welcome back to the show. Love to see you here. Go check out his channel. Check out some content. All supporting Bills, Bills Mafia YouTubers. We got a nice little family here. Uh, what Brady says. But he never said when Josh Allen would win the Super Bowl, so who knows? Yeah, he, he didn't say Josh Allen's going to win a Super Bowl in 2024, 2025, but he did predict him to be the next quarterback to win a Super Bowl. So, hey, I'm good with it. <laughs> Daniel Rojas says, why we got Hamlin still? Um, We got DeMar Hamlin. We need some safety help. We need some bodies there at the position, right? DeMar Hamlin. He's someone who has experience in the in the defensive scheme, that's for sure. I mean, if you look back before his whole cardiac arrest situation on the field against the Cincinnati Bengals, he actually was being a he, he played a pretty key role when Michael Hyde went down and only played two games. What was that? The 2022 season, 2021 season. Like Demar Hamlin, he's a uh, yeah. And we got you got a response in the comment section as well. Like the Bills, they need all the help they can get at the safety position right now. Because like they don't need to get someone that's gonna instantly play a starter. If they signed Justin Simmons today, I'd be I'd be happy. And it's crazy that guy's still a free agent, but his asking price must be crazy. But I do think the Bills, they need some more safeties or corners. They just need some more secondary help there. Get some more bodies in the mix. Get some more young experience. And it does, it's not going to be an instant plug-and-play starter. It's going to be someone that you can draft, groom, and develop over a few years. A raw talent guy who you might like on day three. Get a nice value pick at a cornerback. Like, that secondary is a pretty valuable position. Day three picks, you're looking to add value at valuable positions. Adding a guy in the like a fourth, fifth-round pick. In the secondary, I don't think it hurts at all. Go Bills. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. I love to see it. I love to see it. I appreciate it. Go Bills. Man, love this team. Thank you. Thank you for watching. And thank you so much for your super sticker. You, you're the ones that make this channel possible. I'm just, I'm consistently grinding to make the best content I possibly can. It's appreciated. Greatly appreciated. And now for draft need number four. Four, like James Cook, like the Bills Bunker 4K subscribers, which, by the way, thank you for that as well. That's a goal that I was trying to accomplish for a little bit of time. And this channel is really, it's kind of, it's been really consistently growing ever since I went to Miami last season against, for that week 18 against the Dolphins. And 
That game was electrifying. I love going to the games, love creating the content. And I try to get this Bills content out to you in a timely manner, the best I possibly can. I'm grinding, and I want to make this thing the best I can. I need your help to do it. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe. We got some more stuff to talk about, though. I like the Sabres. You know, Sabres. I went to a Sabres game against the Leafs earlier this year, and I had a sign that said, at least we have the Bills. At least Buffalo has the Bills, you know? Like, uh, the Sabres definitely they let their fans down a lot, don't they? All right. Draft need number four is on the offensive line. The offensive line is a position that we've seen the Bills subtract and add to this offseason. First off, they subtracted by getting rid of longtime center Mitch, Mitch Morse, who veteran, tough, blue-collar kind of center. like He's someone who really embodied what it mean, meant to be a Buffalo Bills offensive lineman. It's tough to see him go. He's now in the Jacksonville Jaguars with Gabe Davis. So they've got a couple of former Bills offensive players over there in Jacksonville. They'll enjoy the sunshine, I'm sure, but maybe they won't get as many wins as we do in Buffalo. On the other hand, Ryan Bates was traded to the Chicago Bears for some more draft capital. With that being said, the Bills did make some additions to the offensive line. Those additions, most notably Will Clapp, and then they also added uh, Lyle Collins. Lyle Collins, former Dallas Cowboys left tackle, and he also played for the Bengals in 2022 before he suffered an ACL and MCL injury that had him sidelined for the entirety of last season. So there's obviously some concern there with Collins and his injury history, but this is a guy who he was a really solid contributor for the Dallas Cowboys offensive line for quite some time. And the Cowboys, I wish I had my hat here. It said Cowboys sucks. But if we know one thing about the Cowboys, it's that they usually have a pretty solid offensive line. That's a need for them right now, by the way. But they usually have a pretty solid offensive line. And Lyle Collins was definitely a key contributor to their offensive line success for a couple of years there. His rookie season, he started out as a guard. Now, do I see him being a guard in Buffalo? Potentially. Like, this is someone that could compete for a starting guard position. Maybe. He's someone who, at the very least, you have someone that you can plug in and play at any time necessary when... Uh, I've just been I've just been handed something by my assistant here, so I need to display it because they heard they overheard me say, "Cowboys." I wish I had my Cowboys suck hat. So here it is. Maybe I'll put it on for the rest of the show. Let's go. All right, all right. There we go. All right, Cowboys suck. So former Cowboy Lyle Collins. He's someone who he's played left guard. He's played left tackle. He's more. Naturally a tackle, especially with his size. Like he's got some longer arms. He's got some bigger size to him. He's more naturally a tackle, but he can play either guard or tackle. So, yeah. I think Collins, solid addition to the offensive line. Just needs to stay healthy. Low risk, high reward signing because it was at a low ch- low price tag for the Bills to get a veteran with all that experience. It's just he comes with the concern of injury. But like I said, at the very least, you have someone that you can plug in and play at any time due to injury. After that, Will Clapp was another addition on the offensive line. Obviously, Will Clapp, former Los Angeles Charger, former New Orleans Saints uh, offensive lineman. Not really heard of too much, but he's known for having a great name. Will Clapp, clap it up, clap it up for Will Clapp. He, he's one of those guys who's center, guard, interior offensive lineman, an additional rotational piece, or someone that can come in and play in case of injury he might he might uh ultimately compete for a starting spot but I, I don't really see it I think the interior offensive line is pretty set right now but perhaps he competes with Connor McGovern for the starting center position so those are my draft needs and I'll go over them one more time let's get some uh Mike Mali guitar says hopefully we draft some Offensive line help, and I'm with you. I think the Bills should definitely draft some additional offensive line pieces because building between the trenches is so 
it's so incredibly important, especially if the Bills are going to continue what they did last season. Last season we saw in the second half of the year, we saw them kind of move away from a pass-focused offense to more of a run-focused offense. And if you're going to run the football effectively in this league, you need to have a solid offensive line with a bunch of big bodies who are willing to put them, themselves, their health, on the line for the betterment of the team. Daniel Rojas says, record predictions. That show is coming soon, my friend. Honestly, if I were to say the Bills right now, they're over under win total on FanDuel. Maybe I'm a degenerate for knowing this off by heart, but it's at 10 and a half. And if I were a betting man, I would probably go on the over. But right now I'm just throwing numbers out there because we don't know what the draft looks like yet. We don't know exactly what the schedule is going to be, you know, how it all plays out. We know their opponents, but you know what? We'll dive into this a little bit. Let me, let me pull up our opponents for next season. Okay. Just give me a second to share my screen and get this all sorted out. 2024 Bills opponents. We'll go through and do a little prediction ahead of the draft. Note, this is before the draft. So we got a, we got a long way to go. And before we do it, are you not worried about the Bills this upcoming season? I'd be lying to say I wasn't somewhat worried. Like, obviously, the team right now isn't as good on paper as it was last season. But am I am I worried about the team? Like, not overly, because they have Josh Allen at the quarterback position. They have Dalton Kincaid, who's an emerging young tight end. He set the rookie receptions record for the Bills franchise as a tight end, which is incredible. Uh, you have James Cook operating out of the backfield, entering year three of his rookie contract. And he was somewhere around third or fourth in the league uh, rushing total, rushing yards last season. So let James Cook, let Josh Allen do his thing, get the ball to Dalton Kincaid. Our defense, the need there is definitely being overblown. Like we lost some pieces on the defensive side of the football, but Trey White has not played a full season in three years. Jordan Poyer is 32 years old. Micah Hyde, this guy's been missing time left and right with the next stingers. So People are just going based off of the names more so than their actual impact on the team. And I'm sure those guys all had massive impact on the team in the locker room. And they're huge pieces for the team in the whole process of, you know, becoming a consistent playoff contender. But eventually it was time to move on. And now it is time to move on. So record predictions. Let's go over their 2024 opponents. I'll do a little a way too early prediction for the Bills record next season. All right, that's how we'll do it. Share screen. Okay, I'm going to do that screen there. All right, here we go. Here's the uh, Bills 2024 opponents list. Look at that. Hey, 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 can I get a hey, hey, hey in the comment section? Uh, okay, so their home games. Jacksonville Jaguars. Gabe Davis and Mitch Morse will return to Buffalo. You got the Tennessee Titans with Calvin Ridley, Calvin Ridley and the Mayo man, uh, Will Levis. Arizona Cardinals potentially drafting Marvison Harrison Jr. Uh, they've got Kyler Murray. The Niners, obviously, perennial Super Bowl contenders. Kansas City Chiefs looking for the three-peat. The Dolphins will get squished because they're the fish. The Patriots, Jets. Okay, so if I'm looking at the home record right here, the Bills always seem to have a problem with the Jaguars. I'm going to hand them a loss here. Not off to a good start. Tennessee Titans win. Cardinals win. I think the Bills will win one of the Kansas City or San Francisco game. I'm going to give them a win in the San Francisco game, a loss against Kansas City. Win, win loss okay so that's what three losses in their eight home games so five and three and i'm going to consider the away games houston texans that is going to be quite the game i'm hoping to get up there go down there 
for that game. That might be a potential live reaction video. Stay tuned. That Diggs game, that's going to be huge. Colts, Rams, Seahawks, Jets, Patriots, Dolphins, Ravens, Lions. Okay, so that's a lot to unfold here. So I have them 5-3 and three after all their home games. Texans, Colts. Oh, boy. All right, so they're going to lose somewhere here, obviously. They're not going to win all these away games. I think they beat Miami. They beat New England. They beat New York because they're going to lose to New York at home. Crazy little thought of mine. Houston. Mm, Houston might be their loss here. Houston and Baltimore or Seattle. What? So roughly I'm seeing anywhere from 11 and 6 to 13 and 4. That's right around the margin I see for the Bills. Honestly, they're... Their ceiling here is their ceiling is probably around the 12 to 13 win mark, and their floor for this upcoming season is probably 10 wins. And if you say, Oh, he's crazy for saying there's there, if they say, if someone says you're crazy for having your floor be a 10 win season, well, guess what? I don't make the odds, I don't work in Vegas, but I trust what these people working in Vegas. These odd makers say they have the inside information. They're saying 10 and a half wins is the over under total for the Bills. So I'd take the over, but I think it's right somewhere in that 10 to 13 win area. Nathan Coates says, as a Texan fan, we're lock up this upcoming season. Hey, you know what? The Texans have got a lot to be excited about for sure. C.J. Stroud entering year two, solid player. C.J. Stroud surrounded by guys like Tank Dell, Dalton Schultz. Heck, Stephon Diggs, too. Are you still recovering from the Diggs trade? Just wait and see. Wait and see. I ain't, I'm not upset about it. Honestly, it's the, the like, man, I Diggs was great for the Bills, and you're going to want me to go into the Diggs stuff, but because you're here, I'll go over it a little bit, okay? Diggs. What you're getting with him, you're obviously getting a great player. I think the Texans did a smart thing in actually changing the contract of Stephon Diggs because we know that Diggs eventually becomes a problem. And it wasn't just with the Bills. You can look at the history with the Vikings as well. So with Diggs, you're getting this. Four seasons in Buffalo, 445 receptions, 4,623 receiving yards, 37 touchdown receptions, Four-time all, pro, four-time Pro Bowler, twenty twenty All Pro. So obviously, digs some solid, solid contributions with Buffalo over the last four years. Am I gonna cry that he's gone? No, because you know what? Honestly, despite how good he was on the field, the guy disappeared in the back half of last season, and he clearly wasn't invested on the team anymore. Like, just if you look at some of the stuff we've seen with Diggs here. I'm sick of talking about it. It's like a broken record. It's just ex posts from his brother, from him. The guy wanted out of Buffalo. You want out, you got what you wanted. There's stuff like this on the sideline, yelling at your quarterback in the middle of a playoff game in a snowstorm. There's stuff like this, having a little freak out, smashing your tablet while overseas in London. Like, for as good as Stefan Diggs is on the football field, the Bills were willing to swallow more than $31 million to get this guy off their team when he was their top receiver. So I think that's pretty telling of clearly it was a locker room issue. But, hey, the Texans definitely, they got better with this trade because they acquired Stephon Diggs, who is a former four-time Pro Bowl wide receiver. He's a 2020 All-Pro wide receiver. Like, you're adding him to that Texans offense. That's going to be a solid combination. It's going to be really hard for defensive backs to cover. There's so many weapons there. You also have Joe Mixon in the backfield. Like Texans, definitely a lot to like about that offense. But as for Diggs, his time in Buffalo, it's moving on to the next chapter, turning the page. And honestly, I'm thankful that it's all come to an end. Good luck in Houston. But I hope you like this channel, and I hope you stay tuned for more content. To subscribe, click like if you like this video. And Nathan says it. <laughs> hey, there you go. 
There you go. Andrew. Hey, bud. He says, how are you doing, Josh? Well, I'm not Josh, but hey, Josh is doing his voluntary workouts with the Buffalo Bills, and he's giving you a thumbs up right here. Look at this guy. He's steaming. Woo! Josh Allen and the Bills are back in town. That's something you love to see. Absolutely love to see it. Football. We got some time. We got a few months before our preseason starts, a few months before training camp even starts. But right now, we are less than two weeks away from the NFL draft. And in this show, I discussed my top four needs for the Buffalo Bills in the draft. I discussed some news surrounding the team over the last week. I'll be right here again next Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Table Smash Tuesday. I'm excited. I hope to see you all here. And if you're new to the channel, click subscribe. Let's see. Yes, Nickel City Mafia says smash that like button. Smash that like button. And also go check out their channel when we're done here. Nathan says, I heard there's rumors that the Bills are bringing back their 90s uniform this upcoming season. I Honestly, I don't think so. Um, I, the rumor that I do hear a lot, it's it's not even really a rumor. It's just like because the, the NFL allowed the third helmet to be in play this season. Like they had already allowed for two helmets, two different helmet base colors, and now they're allowing for a third. But the thing in Buffalo – with Bills fans is that they honestly just love those red throwback helmets. And if you don't know, the red helmet was actually brought into play uh, by the Bills because Joe Ferguson, their quarterback at the time, he was colorblind. He was colorblind, so he had no idea where he's throwing the football. The helmets all blended in, and making those red helmets actually helped him be able to differentiate his players from the opposing team's players. So that's an interesting little tidbit of information. Uh, yeah. Andrew says, it's my first time ever watching you. Well, thank you and welcome here. I hope you click subscribe and I'm happy to have you here. Only team with new uniforms only get three helmets this upcoming season. The rest get in 20.5. Okay, yeah. But still, the red helmet, I don't think the throwback's coming back for the Bills. Uh, the one throwback that they might bring back is the alternate white ones with the standing Buffalo. That that was annoying to me because I bought a Josh Allen jersey last season anticipating them wearing that game. It's usually an October home game that they wear it, and the Bills didn't wear it at all. But either way, I love that jersey. I love it. Um, it since we're on the red and blue helmet discussion now, I guess I'll show some pictures of it, but uh, Bills fan 2020 says sub to the Bills bunker. Let's go Buffalo. Thank you. And yes, I I'm over 4,000 subscribers now hoping to get to 5k before the season starts. And then just keep this thing sailing. Keep the ship sailing. Let's go. Let's make this big. Let's make this as good as it can. I need all your help. Let's do this. Do you want to see Matthews get 70 tonight? It'll be a cool little thing. It would be a cool little thing to, for him to hit 70, wouldn't it? I mean, he's definitely a really talented player. And when I went to see the Leafs play in Buffalo against the Sabres, um, that was what, last weekend, weekend before, Austin Matthews hit 60 goals against the Sabres at Key Bank Center. And it was all Leafs fans, all Leafs fans. The, the Sabres need to do better overall. Like, they need some more help. They need some. They need some investments in that team, 100%. Texan fan here, Bills and Texans game, prime time because of Diggs. 100%, that game has to be flexed to prime time. If the NFL doesn't flex that Houston-Bills game to prime time, they're really missing the mark. These teams, they've got a bit of a history. Like I remember 2019, the wild card round, Josh Allen's first playoff game. Bills were up 16-0 at one point, maybe 13-0 at one point, and they end up, uh, yeah, yeah, we ended up uh, choking that thing. Deshaun Watson went Superman mode, whatever. That was a good game, though, and the dig stuff definitely is going to bring a new light to whenever that Bills-Texan game is, which I would, if I was the NFL, I'd make that week one primetime game, but 
They might wait until later in the season so it has some more implications for the standings. Bills fan 2020, what's more likely, the Bills winning its first Super Bowl or the Sabres winning its first Stanley Cup? I'm going to say Super Bowl because what do the Sabres have? That's like a, the, the Sabres don't have a Josh Allen in hockey. You know, like they've got Tage Thompson. They've got a lot of young players, Rasmus Dallin, Owen Power. They've got a lot of solid assets there, but they just don't have it. They haven't even made a playoff appearance in 13 years now. So if I were to say the Sabres, I would, I would be uh, really uh, not, I don't know. That That's, I got to go with the Bills. Who is colorblind? Joe Ferguson. I actually have an autograph from him somewhere. It's on a picture. But, yeah, Joe Ferguson, old Bills quarterback. Uh, he might have played with OJ and the Electric Company. I'm not sure if he was before that, but he played around that time. Is this the Bills last season in their old stadium? No, they have this year and next year, and the uh, scheduled – Construction is scheduled to be completed around 2026. Could be in time for the 2026 NFL season. But, yeah, the Highmark Stadium right now, I love it. It's a, I go to all the home games every year, do my reaction videos, and it's a lot of fun doing that. So I suggest you stay tuned for those. Click subscribe. Check out other content on the channel. I'd like to go to Houston, check out a Texans game, and I hope we get a better kicker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What can you do, right? It is what it is. Wide right. It's going to stick with us forever. Not just in the 90s, but that thing, it's back into the present day form as well. Um, but now, been on here for over an hour. As I said, Table Smash Tuesday, every Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Always going to talk Bills, Bills news over what transpired over a week and what's ahead for the team. Next Tuesday, the last show before the NFL draft. You're not going to want to miss it. So stay tuned. I'm Jake Varco. Go Bills, baby. Go Bills. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Yes, it makes us want to shout. Two. Shout. One, two, three, four years in a row. They have to use That's a nice show for you. Look at it. Beautiful. Honestly, one of the best things I've seen all night. Those fireworks right there.